Absolutely God, man. Fucking Kalila Khan. Absolute legend. But anyway, let's go. Let's continue back onto the story. Look, she's still fucking... Look, she's still crying. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> um, <laughs> even though difficult, there isn't like a moment of regret that I spent... <laughs> Ten years of my life would be. She wasted the best years of her life with fucking Bobby Lee. <laughs> At least she got paid from it though. She got paid. Don't get me wrong. She boosted the profile. She got some followers online, but it must be fucking brutal to know you spent ten years of your life with fucking Bobby Lee, a fucking proverbial child in a man's body do you know what i mean as a woman bruv you don't have many years to kind of you know give birth and to start a family she's southeast asian i'm assuming so she's definitely gonna want to have kids and settle down and shit and bobby lee just took her for a fucking ride bruv a ride she came in she set up his studio helped him out to set up his life and his career get him to reconcile or to kind of connect back again to andrew zantino he's got a popping podcast he's touring again he's selling merch people are loving him he's getting invited to fucking weddings and shit he's hanging out he's doing a do and then once he got tired and he went to watch some porn and play games he was like deuces absolutely incredible scenes absolutely incredible You're so much better at talking. I'm just like, I just I don't know why I just can't talk. But um, yeah, there isn't like um, an even tiny bit of regret that I spent the last ten years of my life with you, or that I gave you my firm skin years. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little salty about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you look great, baby. Yeah. And I'm sorry that um <laughs> hit the road. Yeah. Hit the road. You look great, baby. <laughs> Good luck out there. Uh big up the super chat. Oh yeah, big up Kablu again. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, appreciate you again, Kablu, for two dollars. A super chat as well. She did pay her gold digging dues after all. <laughs> That's hilarious. Gold digging dues. Oh, mate, I don't know, man. I wonder for the women out there, if part, yeah, for the for the for the ladies out there, if part of the deal was that you'd have to hook up with a proverbial child in Bobby Lee, but you'd have the opportunity to completely change your life to the point where you're able to kind of make money sitting down and talking into a microphone the way I am, but you're able to make real good money where you're paying your mortgage, you're able to buy a car, you're able to get, buy cute clothes and shit. Would you do it? If it meant you're going to give up 10 years of your life. Ladies in the chat, if there are any ladies in the chat, let me know. Would you give up 10 years of your life for the opportunity to change your life forever, but then you've given them 10 years of your prime life, like between the ages of like 20 to 30 or 30 to 40? Okay, hell yeah, okay. Hmm, hell yeah, people are saying. Hell no. Okay. She came up, no one wants to acknowledge this. 10 years, I'm saying, but you have to give up 10 years. And prime, not 10 years when you're 19 and you don't know anything. No, I'm talking about 10 years when you're like an adult, young person, from 20 to like 30 or 30 to 40. Would you give that up? Two, maybe, two, maybe, 10 now. Martha Juara says, yes, yes. Everyone's saying yes. Okay, why not? Okay. I'm a straight guy. I'll do it. <laughs> why not? <laughs> Fair play. Okay. Kablu's saying, I fought by this before and I don't think I like shiny things enough. So it's a no for me. Okay. But more people are saying yes and I fought. As a trans woman, <laughs> I'd have to say no. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Being a guy, well, I've got to say, probably not with an Asian dude. If I was a chick. <laughs> Bob Bitchy, what are you trying to say? <laughs> anyway, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, not gonna go down that road. Not gonna go down that road. Four years for some, and four years and some Starburst. Yeah, fucking cheap date you are, isn't it? RCW, fucking hell. Anyway, let's go. <laughs> I, I, I have so much. Um, I don't know. I have 
it's kind of like this weird thing that we we made you know and i just i want to i want to keep going and i want to um funny enough i think that we've never been closer mm -hmm. like we've been talking like almost like every day like since yeah. we decided to kind of like let go of the 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 label um we've just been i don't know able to hang out more be truth more truthful with one another we're not trying to like mince each other's words to try to like um protect each other's feelings we're just being really like blunt and honest <laughs> and open and it's been so much more i'm gonna go get my back blown out he's like yeah no problem i'm gonna be playing computers all night and fucking doing blow off this table you know telling the truth <laughs> Fun being around. Mm -hmm. and um, I, don't know, I just want to thank you guys for um sticking around and um i hope that you know you continue on this journey with us yeah. oh they will <laughs> they will because um you know i want to I, I i kept cl telling Kalada this and i want to reassure you both of you right <laughs> of the magic of it is like that Saturday night when we did the live show oh. in, at the Ace Theater, right? There is something there um, that I kind of got, you know what I mean? What, why we do it and why oh, we all right. do it. <clears throat> anyway, we both got the both sides of the story. We don't need to keep going on and on and on with this. I think we kind of got the point of it. So let's hypothesize here. What do we think really happened? I'm going to be I'm going to be charitable and I'm going to extend them the courtesy and give them the benefit of the doubt. And I'm going to say personally that I believe both of their accounts because I think they're both telling the truth from both sides of wherever they stand, right? How they see the relationship. Um Bobby's way of kind of explaining or rationalizing why he wasn't sexually into Kalila anymore or romantically or didn't feel that way about her anymore. He's probably justified, even though I think it's fucking redacted as hell that suddenly she gets injured or is ill and she has to become the care and suddenly he doesn't get bonus off her anymore. It's fucking insane. But cool, that's what he thinks. Well, no problem. If she felt maybe that he's kind of sex addiction and wanting to fucking watch porn all the time and play fucking Elden Ring and all that stuff all day was kind of disturbing their relationship and getting in the way. And she went to then go get a black bone out her back or black, her black. <laughs> I've got my thoughts on it. Her back blown out in fucking Hawaii, you know, and it was mutually agreed. Then fair enough. No problem. But I also like to speak about in general from the fucking you know, Tiger Belly fans out there that have been toxic as hell to both of these guys. You guys are dorks. Really are dorks. Like, relationships don't always last forever. And I know you guys have connections with these guys and you're parasocially involved in it and you may be afraid that if they break up, the show might go down the drain. But this was never going to last forever anyway. Never. There was no real opportunity for it to because they would have got married by now. So the fact that they kind of remained in this weird adult relationship thing, given their age, didn't really make much sense. And the fact that they never progressed it any further than having kids and stuff didn't make sense either. And it made me see that on both sides of them, they probably knew deep down that it wasn't going to go any further than what it was. And if that was part of the show's basis, then having a 10 year run where you get to see them develop their relationship, you get to have 10 years of fucking free, amazing content. I don't think that's a bad deal. It will end up probably fizzling out and burning. But I think the fans have got a pretty good deal out of this. Them, they've got a pretty good deal out of this. The people that work there have got a pretty good deal out of this. It was a good run. Things have come to an end and it is what it is. I'm sure whenever this show gets rejigged around and you have a new host, it won't be the same as it was before, but it'll still be enjoyable. If you're a fan of Bobby Lee, you'll still tune into it. If you're a fan of Kalada, you can always see her on fucking Trash Tuesday. So it's not that real big of a deal, really. And like someone mentioned here, Robert Kim, I guarantee they'll get back together. There's always a possibility that they might do, but I just feel all the kind of psychoanalyzing of stuff is really strange from people I've seen online. I just find it a bit, a bit bizarre, but maybe it's because of their personality and people feel connected to him. Who knows? But I do think there is something to be said for the Brendan Shaw aspect of it. It's no coincidence that that fucking guy gets involved with them in some way, shape or form in a really weird kind of like crowbar way. It wasn't even like elegant. It wasn't even like it didn't make it didn't even make any sense. He's going through whatever he's going through with Annie Lederman. He's going through what he's going through off the blowback of him kind of handing that random girl a fucking note on live stream. He's going through all the fucking DMs of him hitting up other women going through whatever. And somehow as a genius as he is in terms of a narcissist, in terms of not taking accountability, he somehow is able to kind of rope Bobby Lee and Kalala into this whole mess. They had nothing to do with it. 
right? He somehow rips them into this whole mess. And since then, I don't feel like they've ever recovered because essentially, you know, if you're a dude, even though what Brendan did was scummy in terms of hitting her up, a part of a dude's head will be like, why would he hit you up anyway, thinking that he could hook up with you, you know, during Christmas time, wherever it was that he hooked up with her, if there wasn't something there? Do you know what I mean? Like, if there wasn't some kind of indication that he got that the door was open, because I don't know, I'm a, you know, I'm a red blooded male myself. You don't throw shots to people that don't know you completely out of the blue. You kind of try to approach them, you try to maybe seduce them, you try to maybe romanticize them in some way, and then you want to try and ramp it up and see if they're going to agree to kind of get sexual with you in any kind of way. But it doesn't just come out the blue out of nowhere. It doesn't just come from you just standing still and just saying to someone's ear, hey, do you know what I mean? It just doesn't happen like that. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You kind of have to, there kind of has to be a little bit of a door there open. So maybe if you're Bobby Lee, even though this is not fair because it's a little bit victim blamey ish right? It kind of, you might look at Kalila with a bit of a side eye and be like, can I really trust you? Because I'm not really too sure if this just came out of nowhere. You know what I mean? I don't know. Maybe this is just, this is what I would say in that regard. So, this guy's fucking touch is unbelievable. He came in and their relationship has now been destroyed. It's never going to recover again. And, you know, here he is fucking probably going to be dancing on their fucking grave on his podcast as well once he kind of gets on there and giggling at himself. Because in the end, he'll probably feel like he's been vindicated because, you know, they end, end up breaking up in the first place. But, you know, I think it ended up ending the way it meant to end. They both got a lot out of it. I don't see the gold digging thing being a bad thing. Bobby Lee's career has never been better. Kalada's got a new role and newfound fame and confidence off the back of it. The fans got 10 years of great content watching a good show that they liked. This is what it is, isn't it? It ended. What can we do? What's the chat saying? What people in the chat saying? Um, Random screenshot, Stevie DM, the divided deer. And, oh, yeah. And... When that rando screenshotted Stevie's DM that divided Bobby and his bro and Bobby loves his Stevie a lot. Do you think do you think that is what happened? MGI or Miggy? Do you think Bobby Lee in the end picked his brother over Kalila? Do you think that's what it was? Interesting perspective. I never really thought about that really. Um Marty Moose says Bobby's gonna slap Shub in the face and say, Keep my wife name out of your fucking mouth. Yeah, right. Fucking Bobby Lee let fucking Ari Shafir beat him up, mate. He's not slapping anybody, man. Imagine letting Ari Shafir beat you up. Like that's insane. Bobby Lee is a slapper. Uh, uh, but yeah. Bobby Lee is a low key pimp, people are saying here. Josie Master saying, I thought that producer was Jules. No, the producer for this one is George. That's the guy in the bottom corner, the one with the hat on. Jules does the. I don't think she's even a producer. I just think she kind of just is a, is a cool, funny little third mic kind of person, in it, on their podcast. Um, she's really funny. I like her on their show. She's, she's, she, she's good bants. Um, but yeah, anyway. Let's continue. Um, what else are we going to talk about here that I went to speak on? Duh, 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 duh. Oh, no, let's not talk about that because we yeah. really, No, 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 no. Could we have spoken about that already? Uh, oh, you know, this is funny, though. Look, actually, how the girls reacted, actually. Let's, just, let's play this quickly. So this is a clip taken from, I guess, Trash Tuesdays and kind of Kalala's opening up about the situation. I think this might have been after. I think this might have been after the... Or was it before Tiger Bear? I'm not too sure. But either way, it's funny how the girls laugh at her at the end when she's speaking. It's like people's nervous reaction when people are getting emotional. It's super funny to me. I do the same thing when really bleak news comes across my table and stuff. And I have a nervous reaction to kind of laugh or giggle, which is really crass and stuff, but I can't help it. <laughs> Look at this. But the truth is, and you guys know this, mm -hmm. I am not the one who asked for an open relationship. And that's no. a fucking fact. I am not the person who instigated, initiated, even thought of that as um, a realm of fucking possibility for my relationship. The truth of that is Bobby was, I intercepted something alluding to Bobby and another woman in Hawaii. And that is even how the conversation ended up to having an open relationship. She was like, oh, you're going to Hawaii to go get your little twinkly sucked? Well, I'm going to go get my back blown out, mate. So you can play that game. I didn't instigate it. I didn't start it. I didn't cheat. Bobby can corroborate this story. We could probably talk about it in a different time in a clearer way when things aren't so like high pressure on fucking mm -hmm. live H3. Um, I didn't do that. 
I simply didn't fucking do that. And if we did move into that space of an open relationship, just because you know about what I did doesn't mean that Bobby didn't go ahead and do what he did. Snitch. <laughs> With whoever he did. I just chose to not know. He chose to ask me that information. I gave him, openly said. So Bobby enjoys when Kalila tells him about getting her back blown out, but he doesn't want to know about her. Makes sense. That might that might come. There might be some. There might be some truth to the whole idea that he's a cuck then, that he's into that kind of stuff, that he actually enjoys it. Maybe not to the extent of where he'd be able to sit in a room and be able to kind of you know rub on his Johnson as it's happening. But maybe the idea or the thought or the story of somebody hooking up with his kind of partner kind of gets him off because why else would you run straight to open relationships? You know what I mean, if you're not getting it down with your, with your partner, you just arrange to kind of have something in the diary. Why would you immediately run to like go hook up with somebody else if you're not kind of interested in it in the slightest, isn't it? This is what I've done. I chose, I opted out of knowing that information. It doesn't mean that he didn't take advantage of being in an open relationship as well. Mm -hmm. And I am so just like, that shit hurts me, you guys, because yeah. I feel like here I have this mic, but I can't even like tell you my truth right. because I feel like that truth is going to be twisted somehow. And I understand that you guys want a villain in this story and it makes life easier to understand when you have bad guy, good guy. And I understand that I have made a lot of mistakes in the last eight years of my relationship with Bobby. I'm complicit in that. But there are two people here. There really are. We have loved each other extensively and deeply, but we have also fucked each other up in a lot of ways. And I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> the laugh at the end from the girls is fucking bruised. I'm exhausted. They're like, yeah, we know. We're exhausted of hearing this fucking story. Just break up with the fucking little asian garden gnome and move on in it it is what it is but anyway <laughs> fucking these guys are so fucking honestly man oh anyway anyway <laughs>